welcome we have learnt about some basic analysis procedure for the multi component distillation and we have learnt about how to use the various types of shortcut methods and the correlations to find out the minimum reflux the minimum number of ideal stages and the actual number of stages depending on the actual reflux uh, now uh, in this particular lecture uh, we shall be looking into some of the problems uh, for the multi component distillation this is part 1 and we shall be following it up with another uh, set of problems so in this particular lecture we shall be learning about the um, distribution of the keys and non keys and how they are going to be used for the analysis of the multi component distillation problems and we shall be also looking into on the determination of the minimum number of trays using the Fenske's equation. So, first we take up this particular problem, it is required to separate a saturated quaternary mixture, quaternary means the a mixture containing four components. So, this particular mixture contains four components and these components are propane that is labeled as component 1 then n butane that is component 2, n pentane component 3 and n hexane that is component 4 and this mixture uh, this feed mixture has a flow rate of 1000 kilo mole per hour. The system pressure is taken to be constant at 1 atmosphere and the reflux ratio is taken to be 3 and it is said that the reflux is at its bubble point, bubble point means it is a, it is a saturated liquid and it is desired to recover 99 percent of the butane in the distillate. That means, whatever butane is going in the feed of, of that quantity 99 percent should be recovered in the distillate and this we call the recovery. Recovery as we know that this is defined as the amount uh, in the distillate divided by the total amount which is present in the feed for the distillate recovery and similarly, we have 99.5 percent recovery of the pentane is desired in the bottom and here this recovery means the amount of the pentane which is in the bottoms divided by the total amount of pentane which is entering the system. And as you can see in this particular problem that this propane, butane, pentane and hexane they are coming in the increasing order of their molecular weight as well as boiling points. So, we can figure out that the in hexane is the heaviest or the um, uh, densest of the component and it is has the maximum uh, boiling point whereas, propane has the minimum boiling point and the least or the um, uh, least of the uh, molecular weights. So, here we have uh, to calculate the composition of the distillate and the bottom products, the condensation rate and the boil up rate and we have for do to do this we have been given the feed composition in this particular table. Here we find this z represents the mole fraction of the various components 1, 2, 3, 4 are given and you can see they are given as 0 0.06 uh, of propane, 0 0.33 uh, of n butane, then 0 0.45 of n pentane and 0 0.16 of the uh, uh, n uh, hexane and this is totaling to 1. This totaling is very important for us because whenever you are given any kind of composition and before you go on to solve any problem, it is always good practice to check that whether the summation of the mole fraction is coming out to be unity or not. So, as you see that there is a summation is coming to unity that means, this data uh, can be used for a further analysis. Now, here we uh, first uh, make a schematic of the particular system. So, here we see this is the distillation column which is the having a condenser and the reboiler and what we find that the vapor from the column is going to the condenser getting condensed and a part is taken, taken out as a distillate and, and the rest of the things is sent back to the column as the reflux. And similarly, on the other side on the on the bottom side we find the liquid comes out of the column, it is taken to a reboiler and it is vaporized and the vapor portion is taken back to the column and if it is partial reboiler that means, the uh, 
rest of the things which is not getting vaporized will be coming out as the bottom product in the liquid phase. So, that is how we are having the operation of the column and on this side we have the feed and this is we have written the feed flow rate and here we have written the feed composition. On this side uh, these all these things we shall be just seeing that how we are getting this equation this is coming from the uh, mass balance for the component 1 and these are the other mass balances given here and we are assuming that um, there is no x 4 d equal to 0 means we are assuming that there is no n hexane coming in the distillate and here also we are assuming that um, there is no in um, this uh, n hexane is not going. So, we are assuming that also the uh, pentane is not coming in the bottom product. So, since the desired separations are given in terms of n butane which is having a boiling point of minus 5 degree centigrade and n pentane with a boiling point of 36 degree centigrade and since n butane has lower boiling point than n pentane the we choose what we do we choose n butane as our low key component and n pentane as our high key component that means we have reduced the quaternary mixture in terms of this pseudo binary mixture and whatever uh, whichever component has lower boiling point than the butane will be taken as uh, the low key component and uh, uh, or uh, and uh, whichever has higher than the high key component will be going with the high key component unless they distribute themselves between the two. So, here we find the n propane has a boiling point which is much lower than the boiling point of n butane. So, there is no chance that n pentane can go into the bottom products and similarly we find n hexane has a boiling point of 69 degree centigrade which is much more than the boiling point of pentane. So, there is no chance of going um, this n hexane into the distillate. So, we can assume there um, this amount of n propane in the uh, uh, in the bottom as 0 and n hexane in the distillate as 0. So, this n propane is the LNK that is the light non key while n hexane is the HNK that is heavy non key. Now, we see that before we go to the problem let us see that how many equations and how many unknowns we have to solve for. Here we find the number of unknowns are 10 and what are these 10 unknowns? This is the distillate uh, product rate, the bottoms rate, the various mole fractions in the distillate and the various mole fractions in the bottoms. And now we find that we have only 6 equations and what are these 6 equations? We have 4 equations for the component mass balance and then we have 2 summation equations that is summation means so summation of this x i d is equal to 1 and summation of x i w equal to 1 that is the, uh, the, product, the, the summation of the mole fractions is always unity. So, that is the meaning of this summation equations so in, in effect we have 6 number of equations. So, degrees of freedom com is coming out to be 10 minus 6. So, we need 4 more variables to be specified before we can have the degrees of freedom to be 0. So, that we can have a unique set of solutions. So, here we see that how to specify those variables the fractional recoveries of the LK HK in the top and bottom product has been specified. So, these become 2 uh, more specifications. So, out of these 4 we reduce it by 2 and now for the rest 2 specifications as we said that we are assuming that there is no in hexane in the distillate and no pentane, uh, propane in the bottoms. So, that is how we are making these 2 more assumptions which based on our uh, understanding. Uh, so, that is how we are exhausting all pro 4 degrees of freedom and now we have uh, we are able we can solve the um, set of equations uh, uniquely. Now, let us coming to those numerical solutions we have been given that 99 percent of the component 2 that is the low key is recovered at the top and so we put the definition of this recovery and this is the amount which is present in the um, um, distillate and this is the amount which is going uh, in uh, with the feed for component 2 and we find this is 0 
So, d x d can be found out from this particular formula and we get this has to be this particular value this kilo mole per hour. And then we do a mass balance here we have say see a control volume. So, we can do a overall mass balance over this whole control volume for component 2 and if we do that mass balance we find that this is how we can find out how much this w x 2 w shows this is the amount of this component 2 coming out as in the bottom product. So, we find this value is coming out to be this from the overall material balance for component 2. Now, we come to the next one that is we take component 3 for which we have been given 99.5 percent recovery. Again we go back to this equation uh, for the recovery and then we find that this is the amount of the component 3 in the bottoms and this is coming out after plugging in the values this value. And we then do an overall uh, material balance uh, mass balance for this component 3 for the whole column and we find this is the flow rate of or the amount of the component 3 coming out with the distillate. And this we have taken already as 0 this x 1 w okay, we have that means the, there is no propane in the bottoms and when we do this mass balance for this propane mass balance we find that we are getting this is the amount of the propane which is going out uh, with the uh, distillate. And this is we find that there is we assume that there is no uh, hexane going with the distillate. So, this value is 0. So, there is nothing come out of the uh, distillate. And now to find out the distillate flow rate what we do we simply add up the amount of each of the components in the distillate and we find this is the amount this is the flow rate of the distillate. So, it is quite simple we are just using the mass balance equation and then the summation equation to find out the total distillate uh, flow rate. And then we if you do a overall mid mass balance over the whole column we find that the feed is equal to d plus w from which we get the w equal to f minus d and the if you plug in the various values we find this is the uh, uh, flow rate of the bottom product from the column. Now, uh, we know that the summation of the mole fractions in any stream is equal to 1. So, we apply this to the bottom uh, stream and then we solve all those equations and <coughs> we find that is that simple algebraic equation you are you are having. Now, if we solve them one by one we shall be having the various solutions for all the products and distribution of the products in the distillate and the um, uh, bottoms. So, this is showing that uh, if we make this table here we find that this is the composition of the feed and this is the composition of the uh, distillate and this is the composition of the bottom product and in this we find that there is no uh, inhexane and in this we find there is no propane. So, that is how we are able to use the mass balance and the summation equation to find out the composition of the distillate and the bottoms. Next we have been asked to find out the uh, uh, boiling up rate. So, here we have it that we first we find that the liquid flow rate in the rectifying section is coming out taken from this that we know the reflux ratio is equal to L by D and we are also assuming that the liquid flow rate is remaining constant inside each section. So, this is the liquid flow rate in the rectifying section that is L equal to R into D and because the feed is liquid at its bubble point. So, that means the feed will be going only downwards it cannot go upward. So, what we find in the stripping section of the column the liquid flow rate will be the flow rate which will be obtained by adding the feed flow rate with the uh, liquid flow rate from the rectifying section. So, that is how we will find that the uh, liquid in the stripping section uh, is liquid flow rate is in stripping section is more than the liquid flow rate in the rectifying section. And now we do a mass balance over the uh, reboiler which is obtained like this that whatever liquid is going in the reboiler is getting distributed for the bottom product and the boil up. So, this is the V is the vaporization rate. So, this we are again using another mass balance and now what we do we simply make this V over bar is equal to this V instead of this um, uh, L over bar we are writing 
f plus l and minus w and we know that f minus w is nothing but d from the overall material balance and then we put for l we put r d here and we get the vaporization rate is coming out to be r plus 1 into d. We plug in the value of r and the value of the d and we get the vaporization rate in the column. So, this is also a very simple application of the mass balance to find out the vaporization rate. Now, we go for a second problem. In this problem, we have a feed mixture with six components and here we have been given the composition of this feed with the six components and again uh, to see to it that the composition is um, right, we again make it a total of it and we find it is coming out to be 1. So, this is all right. So, we and this is separated by distillation and the feed flow rate is again 1000 kilo mole per hour and here we said that 98.5 percent of component 3 goes to the distillate whereas, 98 percent of component 5 goes to the bottom product. So, that means, we are given the rec recoveries of component 3 and component 5 and we are required to find out the minimum number of trays. And in this particular table, we have been given the relative volatilities with respect to component 5. So, this data will be used to find out this minimum number of trays. So, again we put this column and again we are putting the whatever is given to us this Z 3, Z 5 and this uh, feed flow rate and first we identify the low key component which, which is taken as component 3 and heavy key component we take it as the uh, component 5 and we make this particular control volume and on the first side we find that we have been given the recovery. So, without detailing now as we have done it in the previous problem, we find out the flow rate of component 3 in the distillate and this is coming out to this value and then we make a mass balance for component 3 for the whole column and we find out the mass of the component 3 coming out with the bottoms and then we go to component 5, we know its uh, recovery 98 percent and we find out the amount of the component 5 coming out with the bottom and then again we make a mass balance for component 5 for the whole column and this value is coming out to be this is the amount of co uh, the component 5 which is coming out with the distillate. And now we go for the Fensk equation which is given like this to find out the minimum number of the ideal stages. In this equation now it becomes very simple we just plug in the values of these various mole fractions and then we put it in terms of this d and w and what we find that we put this uh, alpha 3 5 value and we put it and we get the value that minimum number of ideal stages is coming out to be 9.45 and if we do in terms of the recovery because we have learnt in our theory two ways of finding out this minimum number of stages either in terms of the flow rates or in terms of recovery. So, again we put this thing in terms of recovery and we find this is the thing we are getting. So, we are finding they are coming out the same. Please remember that do not never try to round it off or uh, make any kind of things like 9.45 not put it at 9 or 9.4 or 10 you just put as 9.45 the number of ideal stages can always be fraction and to know the real number of trays we have to use the efficiency to find out the real number of trays. So, here we are finding the number number of ideal stages required for the given separation. Now, these are the various books you can consult for further detailing and explanations. Thank you.